Hi, I'm Mike Parker. Um, I'm, I'm in the Symmetrics business management team, which means that uh, I have global responsibility for revenues and margins. Um, and of course, this is a technology undertaking, so I sit in engineering meetings all day. I want to talk about how the VMAX works, how we designed it. Now again, the VMAX, what makes a high-end device is the compute engine in front of the drives. And so what we're going to do is we're going to build a big compute engine in front of this drive, up in front of the drives. Then we're going to drop the operating system on it. Uh, then we're going to put some applications, what we call applications, what you'll call feature and function, and then we'll, we'll, we'll talk about some of the drives. So the key to the VMAX, we actually changed the design in, in, in the symmetrics for the VMAX. And the reason that we did that is that the VMAX went to Intel blades. At EMC, everything is going to be Intel blades. And the reason for that is that gives you a uniform platform to run your software. So the VMAX is going to be Intel Blades. What we're going to do is we're going to take Intel Blades and in VMAX we're going to make it look like a much larger server with what we call single layer or, co or coherent memory. Now the way that we do that is Intel Blades are pretty easy and everybody uses them. And typically we're like most people, we've got ports into the blade and we've got a couple of quad core processors so that's Intel, and there's a piece of memory on these blades, and of course that's fairly typical. Most storage providers build their products out of something that looks like that. What we do, the trick to the VMAX, is that we take these discrete Intel blades, and again, the second one looks the same, it's got ports, got the Intel processor, and the memory. But what we do, and this is where the VMAX name came from, we have something called a virtual matrix. What the virtual matrix does is that it links these memories together and it makes them look coherent. So, if you're running in this Intel processor and you're operating within the address range of this piece of memory, <clears throat> you don't have to do anything. You're just sitting here computing. You've got your own ports. You've got drives. You've got hosts. Everything runs fairly fast. If, however, you, you need a piece of memory that's over here, the secret to this design is that we resolve that memory hash through this matrix and get the piece of memory that, that you require out of the other device. Now, that may seem like a lot of technical trivia, but that's actually key to this design because that does a couple of things. Number one, Whenever you build a technology product, it's a three-legged stool. You've got cost, you've got performance, and you've got reliability. And that's anybody that builds technology products. Our suppliers give us cost and they give us performance. What do I mean by that? That Intel blade, that Intel engine, it's fast and it's fairly cost-effective. What about that? This is what EMC Engineering does. We take the basic fast and, and uh, cost-effective things, we make them reliable. Intel themselves are very good <clears throat> at improving the cost curve of the processor. So we get that from Intel. We design this matrix so that we can scale this up to eight engines. Now, one of the things you notice if you design clusters or you've been around clusters, you can't, it's difficult, you don't see eight node clusters. The overhead is too high. <clears throat> the logic I explained here is the extent to the communication. We don't send status back and forth. We don't say, hi, how are you doing? How's your morning going? Strictly memory to memory communication. What that allows us to do is to make this device potentially eight times faster than a single blade. <clears throat> this had a couple of impacts. Number one, the cost is reduced. The performance goes up. Intel's going to make it faster for us. We can make this faster. You can acquire <clears throat> what you need when you need it financially. The cost of the engines will go down over time. That's what Intel does. So in other words, if you need two out of the eight engines, you acquire two out of the eight engines, and you acquire the rest of the engines next year when the cost is going to go down. The previous designs were what we call monolithic. So they had a cabinet, they put the cards in the cabinet, and it, that's what it was. You couldn't, make, you couldn't really make it bigger, you couldn't really make it smaller. This one, 
you can scale it as you grow. Now, the advantage to this is a couple of things. Number one, this is, technologically speaking, we're at the trough of a wave. We can make this bigger. We can, make, we can use more engines. We can drop various operating systems on this. A lot of things we can do. Right now, as you sell it, it's fast, and we're, we're going to contain some costs here. Once you have a big compute engine, and that's, remember, the basic design of a high-end of a high, end, of a, of a high end device, then once you get a coherent memory, single-layer memory, then dropping the operating system on it is fairly easy. So you take the same operating system. We had to port this from PowerPC to uh, Intel, but we started that some time ago. And now you've got a big compute engine with a very capable operating system um, in front of the drives. And that, that now hits your design point. Interestingly enough, this is the design that everybody wants. Because everybody wants to be able to take these Intel blades and scale them up. Many of the competitors have a little trouble getting beyond two or three because they haven't figured out this whole memory-based scaling yet. Uh, but we have the operating system is what's going to make this work. For example, Ingenuity um, always had a, a uniform layer of APIs, which is how you talk operating system to operating system. So, for example, if you're running Oracle, <coughs> excuse me, Oracle sends us information to the array and we send the information back to Oracle, for example, if you're going to split the database or do something like that. So the operating system is going to take care of the um, application interface to the applications, Oracle SQL, Microsoft, VMware, all the usual cast of characters. There's actually about 150 companies out there that write to our APIs. So it's a little more common than, than you might think. These companies can make the array interface with their, uh, with their applications. This is going to give us the basic reliability design that we need because the trick to availability isn't so much hardware as it is the software around it. Um, we have the ability with this design to handle a lot more events, what we call events. And again, the, the events are caused by the drives, they're caused by RAID rebuilds, they're caused by applications. We have two, well actually three now applications that we talk about a lot. One's called Time Finder. Time Finder is known in the, in the industry. That's how we copy a volume for test or for backup or something like that. A lot of people can do that. And you've got a file, make a second copy, split that, and now you can test or you can back that, that copy up. That's been around since 1994. SRDF is how we copy from one symmetrics to another symmetrics. Uh, DMX or VMAX, and we can do intergenerational here. Again, this could be quite some distance. This can go across continents. This can go fairly close. <clears throat> we, can, <clears throat> excuse me, we can actually do three site, and we can do it like that. So that's the other, that, those are the first two applications that we run. And then, of course, the last one is FAST, and I'll touch on that in a, in a minute. FAST is going to tune it. We're going to save you clicks. We're going to save you costs. So those are three applications. Get to those three applications, plus there's management, some other things that you might want to run, and you get, you know, 2,000 drives, and that's a lot of devices. I mean, a lot of events, and, and we're, we're designed to handle that. So that's, that, that's pretty much the, the, the raw base um, design. Big compute engine, that's the key. <clears throat> this is not a complicated piece of hardware. This is a commodity piece of hardware. This is a commodity piece of hardware. Everything's commodity hardware. What's not commodity is the operating system and the logic to make it all work. And the years and years and years, remember the Symmetrics line started in 1990. <clears throat> Since 1990, we've learned things such as how to recover from various failures, drive failures, memory failures. Um, you get into some technical things like nested and iterative errors, which are situations where a lot of error conditions come at you at once. We have never thrown away the design during the life of this product. So there are things we learned in 1990 that are still incorporated in the operating system. This is important because one of the differences between us and the competitors is over 20 years of experience in dealing with all the things that happen in, 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 in mechanical devices like this. So big compute engine, 
virtual matrix, let's scale up the memory, let's make it big, let's make it upgradable so that it's cost effective. Let's run these applications. We need to be able to copy the files, we need to be able to replicate the machine itself. If you have a flood over here, and you're moving a few million dollars through this account every, every hour, you can't wait around and drain the water and dry it out. You've got to <clears throat> fill over to this site. <clears throat> there may be a regulatory requirement that you always have two sites, and if it's a large financial institution, that's the case. So you'd have to have that site still working, that site still working as you're drying this one out, for example, from a flood. We can do that. And then the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to run fast to save costs and save clicks. So this is a fairly complex, sophisticated design with a very sophisticated operating system, but at the same time, we're going to start to save you costs and save you clicks because in the current environment, people have to save money. And that, that's going to hold true anywhere in the globe because everyone on the globe has all the same problems. So, again, this is what FAST, fast revolutionized the high-end market. And to get the, way, the, the way that FAST works is that you start off with storage pools. And we're doing this. We're going to save clicks. We're going to save costs. So, for example, in most cases, you have a pool for example, the high end of flash drives. And you put those drives in the pool. Then you generally have a pool of fiber drives. Best practice here is about 32 to start. And then you have SATA drives. And again, about 32 to start. This is very fast. It's a little pricey. This is extremely cost effective, but it's not very fast at all. So what we do is we balance what data goes where. We have this piece of fiber in the middle to act as a drop zone. <clears throat> People ask, how many storage pools can I have? Well, you can have up to 256. How many do the big accounts have? Three or four. <laughs> okay. Then you come over here and um, you group your applications. For example, this, you know, this might be your production SQL. That's how you make your money. And then you might have you know, a test environment, and then you might have a development environment. This is very important. That's how you make your money. This one you don't really worry about particularly, and that's a little bit more important. How many of these, how many of these application or policies can we have? 256. How many do most people use? Three or four. And then you got the policy in the middle. And this is what makes it all happen. So for example, <clears throat> you might say in this case, I want 20% of my data to be in the flash, maybe 20% of my data to be in the fiber and everything else to be in the SATA. And then you might have one for the test guys, which will go well, 20 and 80. And then for the dev guys, you might simply go 100% SATA. So as you can see, so depending on your application and how important it is, you then assign them pools, broadly speaking. Now remember, the Symmetrics is going to tune this dynamically and in real time, and it's going to make the adjustments every 30 minutes. Now we've learned some things in best practices. That was the original design. <clears throat> the questions around this usually fly. For example, the first question that you always get, can we run this in emulation mode? And the answer is you can and you will, because this is a fairly this is a departure from the normal, so we want to be conservative. Remember who our customers are. So yes, you will run this emulation mode. It's called Tier Advisor. And what Tier Advisor will do is say, well, if I would have been running, I would have moved that to here and moved that here and moved this here and moved however it would have done it. Second question that I get, and this was what we found out in uh, the beta test, can these numbers exceed 100%? Yes, they can, and furthermore, they should. So for example, the, the SATA should always be 100% by itself. Why? Well, if it's not doing anything, there's no reason to push things needlessly up into this more expensive storage. So what you really end up with is the SATA drives always being 
because again, if there's no activity on the application, then you may as well put that data down here. Um, <clears throat> so again, what this does, and this is key to selling the new high-end product. Again, now we have some fairly sophisticated technology and design over here to make sure that this works and it scales and it's and it copies and it recovers from floods and those sorts of things. But when you come over here, this is going to save you costs and clicks because essentially what happens once you get this working, and again, you know, usually three or four groups here, usually three or four groups over here, and a couple of policies. And then what happens, and, and again, this, this gets back to your data is going to grow, oh, say 5x. Nope, I'm sorry. It's going to grow about 10x in five years. That's what we worry about in the high end. Now, in order to deal with this, we're going to make this simple. So what happens when you get all of this implemented is all you're doing is you're coming in, you're checking the pool utilization. So you come in here and say, how much flash is being used? No, oh, 60%. Okay, that's fine. Well, how's my fiber being used? No, oh, 85%. I better order some more drives. If I order more drives and put them in this pool, does EMC restripe them? Yes, we do. And, and furthermore, because of this operating system, we have something called a preemptive event driver, which means that we can do things like this while not interfering with the reads and writes that make the money, that, that, that do the work. So yes, we will, we will restripe these drives as you add them. If that goes from 32 to 64, we'll restripe those drives. Check your SATA, you know, it's 50%, it's, you know, that's fine. So what happens is the management turns into, you come in the morning, you check it, and you go do something else. Now, as the IT load increases, your people are going to become more and more valuable, but not necessarily managing the storage. You can't get anything sold. The bank can't run. You know, you can't run a hospital playing with the storage. We're going to move this to our compute engine. We're going to make this good and simple. And um, like I said, we're going to save cost and clicks. So let's summarize the high end, the design, what it does. First thing, big compute engine. We use discrete Intel blades. Why do we do this? They're easy to manufacture. So this is not a difficult piece to manufacture. We're not going to run out of Intel blades. If you're in a high scaling, rapidly scaling environment like a hospital, if you walk into a hospital and ask them how big it's going to be, they don't know. So we build this so that we can scale it rapidly with Intel blades. Nothing complicated here. This piece isn't complicated either. The, the software is, but that's that could be replicated consistently. So. Intel blade based um, compute engine, virtual matrix, we're going to scale this memory based uh, operating system on this, APIs. We're going to run time finders, you can copy the files for test and development or maybe just to keep some copies. We're going to run SRDF if you have to copy the data for site protection, floods, fires, um, you know, somebody cutting your backhoe, those sorts of things. And then we're going to run fast. This. We're going to, in, in this case, we're going to save you costs, we're going to save you clicks, because we're going to come over here, we're going to organize your storage pools, expensive, medium, cheap, fast, medium, slow. We all know what these do, but the problem is, is that you can't keep up with this from a human point of view. Come over here to the application groups, and you can have, you know, maybe you have an Oracle database that's important, and you may, you may want to point that up there as well. So you have your application, production SQL, production Oracle, maybe some tests that's not quite as important in dev, you're not really worried about. And you point these guys to the proper pool of storage that, that you want them to, to uh, go to. So this saves you cost because you can put most of your storage down here. Globally, we're seeing about 4 to 5% of the data living on the flash. So not a lot. A lot of it sits down in the SAT as people age as, as they move with this technology they acquire down here. So we're going to save you money, save you time, put the data where it belongs, we're going to save you clicks, we're going to reduce the number of people that, that have to do this, and we're going to provide you high availability and a very favorable acquisition environment.